A couple days ago it was like 20 degrees, now it's like 35. And when it's 20 degrees and then it becomes 35, all of a sudden it feels like the summer is back. Sorry it's been so long, I, I just keep getting work and things and trips and traveling and it's hard to edit when I drive. I think I can edit in a hotel room and I just cannot. I cannot focus when I'm in a hotel room. I was in Chicago in the last 10 days and that took up a lot of my time. I had an amazing trip to Fab Tech, I'm gonna talk more about that. Work this week, I'm making these 10 garment racks. I made the prototype just before I went away to Chicago. While I was in Chicago, I got the green light to make these 10 garment racks. I had some of the guys in the shop cut up the parts. While I was away, I got back and we jumped right in into it. Making these garment racks out of two by two inch tube. I've been making a lot of things. This two by two inch tube is becoming like my two by four of late. It really is versatile. I'm using it for all kinds of tables and all kinds of stuff. Probably gone through 50 of these 24 foot long tubes. These got to be done and delivered this week. So hopefully next week we'll have a money shot and we'll also have a video of the process of me manufacturing 10 of these garment racks. Arbitech sent me their Ball gouge this week, Arbitech, thank you very much. So I tested it out and my little test turned into a full-blown video. It's me making this double-sided spoon, just a, an experiment that turned into a little bit more of a process and I videotaped the whole process. So that's gonna be a video out probably maybe in the next couple days. It's a simple one, it's gonna be a fast video. But I'm proud of what I made, it's a start. I don't typically make a lot of spoons. This in fact is the third spoon I've ever made in my life. My friend Tracy, who came and did the axe class, he, he does a lot of this stuff and, and he does that for a living and he inspired me and we might even do a spoon making class, so keep an eye out for that. Link in the description for that Arbitech ball gouge. This ball gouge is for sale as of today. Fabtech table is up, the video is up. Me and five other YouTubers made parts and we brought them all to Fabtech and we assembled them at Fabtech and it was a lot of fun. Fabtech was amazing, had a great time. The guys at Lincoln, guys thank you so much. I couldn't have had a more amazing fun time with great people. The fans were amazing. I got to hang out with Mr. Pete again. I got to see JD, Jody, and all the guys from Welding Tips and Trick Podcast, Crummy and John, and I learned so much and I got so inspired. I've been doing a lot of metal work lately. I got some wood working stuff in the shoot. Lately I've been doing a lot of metal work, primarily because that's the jobs that come through the door lately. Just what happens. Remember I used to make signs? Now I make everything in metal. Sorry. Speaking of metal and wood, remember this wine case I made a couple weeks ago? And I couldn't say who it was for. It was a gift from Maynard. He did a performance at, at a, an arena here in New York and they bought it for him as a gift and they found me on YouTube. So thank you YouTube. Thank you Barclay for picking me for doing that project. It was a lot of fun. Apparently he liked it. I didn't get to give it to him, but he liked it. It was exciting and it was great to have the opportunity to make that Maynard from Tool. So that was the inspired video. It was kind of by, inspired by Tool. Love Tool. I think I failed to mention Maker Central is going on next May 2018 in Birmingham, England. And I forgot to mention this sign I'm gonna bring with me and I'm gonna give it away. So I'm gonna be there that someone's gonna to get to keep this sign. Exciting, so don't forget Maker Central. And also Workbench Con is coming up. That's gonna be in February in Atlanta. I'm gonna be there as one of the lecturers. I'm gonna talk about failure and getting back up again after failure. And at my age, I've had about 75,000 adventures that didn't go where they were expected to go. Here I am on YouTube, very happy, so thank you for that. Wanted to announce my very first set of plans is up and available on my web store, and I'm really excited about that. Uh, some people behind the scenes pushed me to do this, and so guys, thank you for doing that. My buddy Ryan is doing all the CGI and the SketchUp imagery for this stuff. This is the first one. There's gonna be about three more coming right away. We're working on them right now, so as we get to new plans, I'm going to announce them here on the vlog. So go check out my web store for some new shirts, new hats are coming, the ones that say I make license plate, they're gonna be out any minute. More ice picks are on the way, so uh, if it looks straight, it is straight, and more of the Make Man prints. They're all coming very soon. An update on the TV show that I did in California. I don't know if I ever officially announced what it was here, but I did talk about it on the podcast quite a few times. Uh, it is a show called Making It, and Making It is also the same name as my podcast. I talked about it on the podcast, Making It. 
was a name that they wanted. Legally, they could have taken the name. They tried to make a deal with me and my podcast mates, Bob and Dave, to buy the name from us. They're really just buying the rights so that we wouldn't use the name. And we decided after a couple of conversations that they can use the name and we're gonna keep using the name. So we didn't take any money. So that's a little confusing because now it's announced out there what the show is. I am on the show. It will probably air sometime in the new year. I don't know exactly, but of course, once I find out, I will let you all know. Look forward to that. It's exciting. I'm going to be on NBC. Kyle was here for over two full weeks, and while he was here, he got a lot of fan request hangouts. So on one rainy day when he couldn't work, which was a Sunday a few weeks ago, I said, let's just do a hangout. I opened it up. I didn't want a billion people here. We only had about... 40. And it was great, great, great hangout. We had a really good time. Guys came at about two o'clock. Last guy left at midnight. We had a tremendous, great conversation, a great, cool hangout in my shop in upstate New York. I announced it on Instagram. A great response just from my quick announcement on Instagram. My fans, Kyle's fans, and we all got to meet and hang out. It was, it was amazing. We had a great time. Guys, whoever showed up that day and brought some food and beers and, and cake and candy, thank you very much. And I'm going to do that again soon. That was a lot of fun. And now for some fan mail. I have a lot more fan mail filmed. I will try and leak it out as time goes on. So thank you very much for my fan mail, guys. I'm so, uh, I'm so honored that you would send me the gifts you make and the things that you, you want me to have. So I, I thank you so much, really honestly. Building update. You guys know that Kyle built this incredible, beautiful building in the back. Some people are calling it the Maker Church because it's got a big, steep pitch, which is an 812 pitch. It looks like a church. And uh, that inspired me. I might put big stained glass windows at each end, but that's a low on the priority list. First on the priority list is a new floor, windows, walls, insulation, electric, all that fun stuff, all the fun, expensive stuff. That's all coming up. Which, by the way, a lot of people are emailing me. Can you, do you need help? If there's any manufacturers out there that want to get involved with an advertising opportunity, contact me. I mean, if you're a window company and you want to do some sort of trade out, or if you're an insulation company and you want to do some sort of trade out, or if you do radiant floor heating and you want to do some sort of trade out, I'm not looking for a full zero money deal. I'm just looking for some sort of help. I'll help you. You guys will help me. We'll figure it out. Maybe I'll learn something new that I don't know anything about, but I am getting some solicitations. I'm open to that. If uh, the right thing comes along, I want this building to be part of this community. And if there's other people out there that would like to contribute in one way or another, maybe you're a window distributor and you have a bunch of windows left over and we could do a quick, fast deal. Open to all kinds of creativity. Kyle has done incredible drone work on this build. He's got a series doing every single day of the build from day one all the way till his very end. And I'm excited to see it because he finished it while I was away. So it's exciting. I'm going to see stuff I didn't see at all. Maker Church. Maker Church with the Dream Builder. You're my first pastor. It's an epic build for sure. I mean, this is not something that is typically done. Uh, the truss system is not typical. So typically on a post frame, you're in like that 412 pitch, maybe a 612, which means 
four inches of rise every 12 inches of run. That would be like a standard pitch. Right, right. Uh, this is an 812, so you just don't see it, you know, and it, it gives it more of an epic scale to it. When you add on the fact that we've got a 512 bottom cord that's right. gonna get you that height on the inside, right. it really, it well, just that's because cool. we, we wanted that loft on the second floor. Yep. Ultimately, when I can afford to put a second floor in. Uh, how do you like building in Northeastern New York? Uh, it's got its challenges. I mean, there's a lot more trees than I'm used to, so we're working around trees. Yeah. But the weather has been phenomenal temperature-wise. We've had a little bit of rain. It's November 3rd today, and it's, it's like 70 I mean, I'm wearing a t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, I was sweating earlier when the sun was out. But, crazy. Uh, Tell me a little bit about the, the strength of this building. And a lot of the people looking at this building don't understand why it's so strong. Well, with a post frame versus a, a stick frame, like this is 20 foot tall. If you're gonna do that in stick frame, you're probably gonna do it with two different sets. You're gonna do your first story framing and then you're gonna do your second story framing. Right. You've got connections now from the ground foundation. You've got a connection from the foundation to the first floor, to the second floor, to the truss. We've got like a solid you know, frame all the way from the truss down to the ground. So that provides a lot of strength there. We got three ply two by eight columns, right. six foot on center. That gives a ton of, you know, like wind loading strength. Once we put this zip on the exterior walls, you've got extreme shear strength. Yeah, so everywhere, in every direction. In every direction, the roof is sheeted with uh, zip, structural sheeting, yeah. uh, the walls are. Yeah, there's cross bracing. I mean, the cross bracing is more for our framing aids at this point. The wind would have to like probably knock this thing over in a big box. Yeah, but um, that's not happening because you got four we, feet by 18 inch yeah, I have more than four feet when you're all done. I mean, those those piers are probably like 50 inches down, yeah, at 18 least. inches or bigger. Huge. Exactly, because all the rocks we hit. And just to also to explain, you make the hole bigger than 18. It's just yep. the top one foot is that tube. Yeah, yeah, just just to form it up nice and neat, but the bottom is kind of belled out. Could be uh, any direction, any shape, as long as you got a hole. Yeah, the, the goal is to keep it bigger on the bottom than the top, so yeah. then if you get any frost heave, you don't, you don't get frost heave. Right. Uh, but, you know, Post frames have been around forever. I mean, people have been building post frame style buildings forever, just throwing a bore or two by in the ground or a four by four in the ground. We've evolved here where we've got a cement pier with a, an engineered bracket right. that is providing better shear strength, better uplift capacities. Right. Across the board, it's, it's a much stronger system than those buildings that are 50 years old sitting out there right. in the dirt. I mean, ours are gonna be up and dry. So there aren't a ton of guys doing a concrete pier because it is more labor intensive. Right. Uh, but, but you got someone's gonna last forever. Now. You bet. I mean, it's it's not gonna be like you drive around up here. You see some of these barns, they're, they're sunken two feet on one side because the bottom yeah. just kept rotting away as the building goes deeper into the dirt. Always oh, doesn't matter how much treatment you got. There's gonna be minimal rot right. or a lot of rot. Right. So. And now that you reduce it by coming up out of the ground six eight inches with cement. Right. Sure. Close. I mean, if you have proper drainage, you know, there's going to be a little bit of soil or, or subgrade, whatever you're going to do there up against those posts. But, uh, you know, you're going to have it anyway with a grade board. You're going to have your dirt or your gravel. I mean, I always recommend gravel, Jimmy, because right. it provides better drainage. Right. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's going to last a lifetime. So a lot of these zips say 30-year guarantee. What does that mean? This is the best money can buy for right. a sheeting system. Right. And it's gonna be better than like your traditional OSB or plywood, and that's been getting used forever, so. Right. So now, it's only better than what everybody's been using. You bet, yep, and it's a, it's a complete dry system. So what that means is as soon as we hang it, and as soon as we tape the seams, you're weather tight. It's a, it's a barrier against the weather, right. rain, wind. And this says this was made October 14th. October 14th, 2017. That was three weeks ago. Only the best for Duresta. <laughs> you know? Amazing. It's pretty cool and it's very true product it's like you know precise a lot of a lot of products when you get them they're off uh you know 16th or they're not square or whatever this is pretty good so that's, that's a lot nicer for guys like me who are building it the chains are something you don't see a lot guys will brace up big buildings with two buys they'll make a frames with a couple two buys but those do break under extreme loading uh we we opt for chains and then it also gives us an ability to kind of torque the chain one way or the other right. so we can get precise um you know square yeah square level all those good things that we like because it makes you, our you didn't job seem, easier you didn't seem too worried about those crazy winds that came like after the third or fourth day you were here no but i've you, you no, weren't worried but i've seen tornadoes go through where our buildings were and it all depends on the stage that you're at i mean if you've got like one wall and the wall the wind is going right at it you could potentially move the building uh but i've had 250 foot of wall up with 
no chains and have 40 mile an hour winds and it wow. do nothing. So I feel really good about this system. We've been doing it for about four years now. Mm. Knock on knock on wood, right. no issues. So yeah. And uh, are you happy you came all the way up here to upstate New York? To oh yeah, definitely. I'm, re I'm ready to see my family. You know, my kids are <laughs> definitely ready for dad to be home. My wife is ready, yeah. but it's a great opportunity. Definitely Thank me and you. Greg appreciate it, Jimmy. And Thank you, uh, for coming, man. you guys are great. It'll be a, a, a lifelong memory and we can't wait to get back when you get some interior done. Oh so, yeah. yeah, that's the next phase, the hard one. Yeah, yeah, I'm the easy one. So we'll be out of here <laughs> and then you gotta make all your big decisions. Oh so. Jesus. That's yeah. the expensive part. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, bro. <laughs> Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Jimmy. Yep. Wanted to let you know that I'm at 1,107,000. I owe you a collections video, and I definitely have one in mind. So I'm going to work on that, I promise. Collections video coming up very soon. Got some good stuff in this shoot. Just gotta get out of my own way and get it done. Thank you for the love and support. Thank you to Kevin who came out this week and helped me with the garment rack stuff and machining on this thing. Kevin, you're amazing. Every time I hang out with you, I learn something new.